DaVinci Resolve is like the rock star of color grading, but there's a catch. It can be tricky to learn. In this video, I'm gonna guide you through the color page on DaVinci Resolve. Think of it as a super basic introduction to DaVinci's world of color. We're gonna unravel how the software sees color and light. So when you face all those fancy knobs, dials, and color wheels, they won't seem so mysterious. So let's jump right in. Here we find ourselves on the DaVinci Resolve color page. Take a look at the upper left corner. That's the clip we're working on. In the middle, you've got the preview window and over on the right, there are nodes and some cool effects, but we'll save those for another day. Today, our focus is on the timeline itself and the color wheels in the lower left, along with the scopes in the lower right. Why start here? Well, it's like building a house. You've got to lay down a solid foundation first. I believe that if you grasp how the timeline color wheels and scopes work, those flashy advanced features that people often jump into too quickly will start to make sense. It's about understanding the basics to unlock the full potential of DaVinci Resolve. Let's kick things off by exploring these key elements. Let's start by checking out what's on our plate. Right now, I've got one main clip in my timeline. You can spot it in the upper left where it says clips. That's the magic button. If it's not showing up for you, make sure you've got clips turned on. Now, see those clips lined up? Each one represents a different segment of your project. Clicking on a clip, a simple left click highlights it in red. Now, notice that timeline scroller below. Move it around and you can explore any part of that selected clip in the preview window. Shift your gaze to the lower left, where a cluster of captivating color wheels awaits. There are three of them, and depending on your DaVinci Resolve settings, you might encounter a different one first. Let's break it down. The first one, the primary's color wheel, is divided into lift, gamma, gain, and offset. The second option, primary's color bars, looks almost identical, but uses bars instead of a wheel. You manipulate individual bars here instead of moving a central pointer. Lastly, the third one is log wheels. Though it may resemble the original color wheels, it's a whole different beast, and I'm going to walk you through the distinctions among these three. Understanding these wheels is like having the keys to the kingdom when it comes to color grading or correction. When you're diving into color correction, your focus is on fine-tuning the footage within your project. The goal is to address any deviations and ensure the white balance is just right, essentially starting from a neutral standpoint. You're like a digital detective, correcting anything that might be slightly off. Now let's talk about color grading. This takes on a different vibe. It's less about fixing and more about creating a specific atmosphere. Imagine you're an artist, intentionally playing with colors to set a mood. For instance, if you're crafting a nighttime scene, you might lean towards cooler tones like blue. Or if you're in a setting drenched in desert sun, your scene naturally takes on that warm red feel. In essence, color grading is all about manipulating colors to evoke a particular mood or ambiance while color correction is about ensuring you start with a clean, neutral canvas. I've got this footage from a music video here, and what I want to do is introduce you to the scopes on the right to help us understand the colors in play. Let's start with what's called the parade scope. It's my go-to, and if you check the drop-down above this window, you'll find different types of scopes you can use. The parade is the default, and I find it really effective in deciphering the color vibe of your clip even if your monitors aren't perfectly calibrated. Now let's decode the parade scope. On the left side, you'll see values ranging from 0 to 1023. Without diving into the technicalities, think of 0 as the blackest of blacks, like when it's pitch dark and you can't see a thing. On the flip side, envision 1023 as an exceptionally bright area, capturing a lot of light that your eyes can perceive. So, from left to right, you'll notice distinct bands of red, followed by green, and then another segment shifting sharply to blue. They stand out and feel independent. The reason behind this is the familiar RGB, red, green, and blue, the primary colors that together create every other color imaginable. Take a look here. The red section seems to extend a bit taller, spiking up higher than the green to its right, and the blue is somewhat compressed. What's going on is a visual representation of the color intensity across the lows, mid-tones, and highs in the current frame of my timeline. If I were to shift the play head around, these values would likely fluctuate, but in this consistent shot, they stay fairly steady. However, imagine if the lighting changed abruptly, a bright light flashed or the scene transitioned, and you'd witness these shifts in real time, a direct reflection of what's happening in the selected clip. Now, let's bring the color wheels into the mix. I've clicked on the first set of primary color wheels. These are your tools to sync up with the scopes for effective color grading or correction. 
the leftmost controls called Lift manage the color in the darker areas of the clip, giving you control over the lows. Move to the right and you'll find Gamma, which influences the midtones, that sweet spot between dark and bright. Next up is Gain, residing on the right, responsible for the bright colors in those high tones. The last wheel on the far right, offset, is like a master volume, affecting the overall color balance. Let's quickly observe how these color wheels influence the color, especially with the guidance of the scopes. This is crucial, so pay close attention to what unfolds. First up is the lift. There are various ways to control it, including a central dot that can be moved around. But for now, let's focus on the wheel underneath. If you left click and hold, dragging it up or down, you'll notice changes in the darkest portions of the video clip in the bottom section of the scope. Pulling it up brightens the darks, making the clip appear less saturated and reducing the intensity of the lower tones. But here's the magic. It's not just affecting the bottom. It's like there's a fixed point at the top, and moving the wheel shifts everything from lows to mids, bringing them all up together. Now, onto the gamma section, which deals with mid-tones. Left-clicking and holding the wheel underneath, moving it upward, stretches the mid-tones, grabbing some of the lows and pulling them along. The fixed low point remains, creating an effect as if the entire middle section is stretching, brightening up the mids. If you look at your preview window, you can witness the midsection getting brighter or darker, as if a fill light is adjusting the ambiance. Resetting for a moment, let's shift to Gain, which controls the brightest parts of your footage. Left-clicking, holding, and dragging the lower wheel to the right lifts the brightest portions, even surpassing the scope's upper limit. This extreme stretching may go beyond what your eyes can perceive, but it drags a bit of the mids along with it. Each adjustment in lift, gamma, and gain interacts, creating a dynamic push and pull effect. It's a dance of lights and tones in the world of primary's color wheels. Now, let's explore the offset, which acts as the master volume for the whole shebang. Observe closely as I demonstrate. I'll reset everything, and then, with a left click and hold, I'll drag the wheel solely on the offset. Watch the magic unfold. The entire spectrum moves either upward or downward. It's like taking all the colors, reds, greens, and blues, within the visible light spectrum we're observing from 0 to 1023 and shifting them uniformly. No stretching occurs. Instead, it's a simultaneous lift or descent of everything. Look at the preview window and you'll see the impact, uniform brightness either throughout or a collective dimming of the lows, mids, and highs. This isn't about stretching or expanding, it's about moving the entire ensemble up or down in the visible light spectrum that your eye perceives. Now, let's venture into the next territory, the color bars, specifically the primaries color bars. You'll notice the familiar names, lift, gamma, gain, and offset, and here's the kicker. They do precisely the same things as their counterparts in the color wheel section. Give it a whirl, left click and hold on the lift wheel, turn it to the right and you'll witness the same transformative effects you saw back in the color wheel section. The only contrast between these two sections, the primary color wheels and the primary's color bars, is the method of individual control. When you're looking to break down the reds in the darks or focus solely on the greens in the mid-tones, the individual controls become crucial. This is where the bars shine. They allow you to isolate just the red, just the green, or just the blue, providing a finer level of control. It's like having a more interactive tool when you want to fine-tune without affecting the other elements too much. I get it. There's a lot to absorb and it might be a tad confusing. But here's the key takeaway. We're playing in the realm of the light spectrum, moving from dark to light and dancing with the colors. Red, green, and blue. All these scopes, primary wheels and bars, are merely tools in our creative playground. Stick with me and it'll all start to click. Now here's where things take a distinctive turn. Let me reset for a moment. We're stepping into the third and final set of primaries known as the log wheels. Brace yourself, this one, you'll visibly notice a difference. You might be thinking, wait, this looks quite similar to the previous one. Why the seemingly redundant options? Well, it all boils down to the way they interact. DaVinci Resolve generously offers various tools to precisely fine tune the colors of your clip. Now you don't need to be a wizard with every intricate detail. Mastering the basics will equip you with everything you need to skillfully correct your footage, ensuring it looks stellar, whether you're sharing it on YouTube or any other platform. With these foundational concepts, you'll be well equipped to discern the nuances as you navigate deeper into the intricacies. Let's revisit the original color wheels for a moment, keeping in mind the dynamics we explored. I've reset it and remember, when we left, clicked and held the wheel cranking up the lows, it felt like a pin was stuck at the top. 
anchoring it, and then it pulled everything up. Now, let's transition to the other primary wheel, the log wheels. As I left, click and grab the shadow wheel, it's a similar concept. We're still in the realm of the darkest color spectrum. However, observe closely. When I move it to the right, notice the difference. There's a distinct focus on a narrower band, honing in on just the darks. It's as if it said, let's pin it more centrally and concentrate on lifting only the bottom section, reducing the darkness in the reds, greens, and blues. This is the unique control offered by the log wheels. It zeroes in on a more specific range within the light spectrum. Typically from 0 to 256, instead of moving a broader span, like 384 to 512. So, when deciding which wheel to work with, consider your footage's needs. Are you making sweeping adjustments affecting a large portion, or is it a specific issue in the reds and highlights? Here, you have two main choices, the color wheels for broader adjustments, or the log wheels for a concentrated focus on specific light bands. The color bars, essentially an iteration of the color wheels, with added fine tuning, fall in between. It's about choosing the right tool for the job. I quite like the overall appearance, but there's a small tweak I'd like to make, perhaps adjusting the contrast. Here's where those nifty icons above your wheels come into play. Direct your attention below these icons, and you'll find a treasure trove of options. Temperature, tint, contrast, pivot, mid-detail, and more. For my current adjustments, I'll stay within the primary color wheels. To add a touch more contrast, I'll navigate to the contrast icon, left click and drag it to the right. The magic happens. More contrast is introduced. If you observe closely, you'll notice the visual impact in the scopes. It stretches out certain sections, letting the mid-tones delve a bit deeper into the shadows and reach a tad higher into the brighter tones. This dynamic interplay, evident in the scopes, showcases the influence of contrast on the reds, greens and blues across the lows, mids and highs of the light spectrum. It not only enhances the visual appeal, but also enriches the color spectrum. Now, let's talk about color intensity. If I desire more vibrancy, I might opt for the color boost. A slight nudge upwards, and you'll witness a pivot in the colors. Alternatively, I can globally increase the saturation, intensifying the vibrancy of each color. Currently, I find the color balance fine, but these tools offer flexibility to fine tune it to your liking. One element I'd like to enhance is the blue hue on the bass guitar he's leaning on. I'm eyeing the mid-tones, aiming for a subtle elevation in the blues without universally cranking up all blues in the high offset. The goal is to make that bass guitar pop a bit more. To achieve this, I'll venture into the gamma, representing the mid-range. With a focused intent on the blue tone, I left, click, hold, and gently drag it to the right. This action stretches the blue, coaxing a more pronounced presence from the guitar and the surrounding blue elements. You'll notice this adjustment reflected in the scopes on the right, a subtle narrowing and heightening, indicative of a gentle amplification of the blue tones. Here's the beauty of it. I'm using these scopes to align my adjustments with what my eye perceives. And for a quick comparison against the original, I can toggle the bypass color option. The changes unfold, brighter, more expansive, with the blues taking a delightful prominence. The room breathes a bit better, revealing more details. As you start your color journey, consider these sections alongside the parade scope. It's about discerning the nuances in reds, greens, and blues, and deciding where a little boost or a slight adjustment is warranted. Use your keen eye and the scopes to strike that perfect color, balance within the light spectrum. This is just the beginning. The color page in DaVinci Resolve offers a myriad of possibilities. Start by tinkering with those three primary wheels. No need to perfect it, just observe how the visual landscape transforms with each adjustment. And there you have it, loads of info to soak in, but don't stress, it's all about practice to level up your color grading game. Right now, I'm still editing in Premiere Pro, but I'm slowly vibing more with DaVinci Resolve in my workflow. I'm still on the learning train myself, so if you've got any burning questions, toss them in the comments below. Hope to see you in the next one. Keep it chill and happy editing.